Today, we're going to be talking about building a kingdom culture around parenting for the glory of God. Building a kingdom culture around parenting for the glory of God. Now, singles, before I lose you, which I may have because of that statement, I want you to understand one of the main arguments in a marriage is the disciplining of our children. And so when Colleen and I, we made decisions pre-married because we went through premarital counseling, they talked about parenting. What is that going to look like? What are your thoughts? What are your feelings? Is the wife going to go to work right away or is she going to be a stay-at-home mom? We need to talk about that before you say, I do, because if you'd say, I do, and you never hit that, there's going to be drama. Also, singles, your parents missed a lot of stuff. If they're here today, for, forgive me. If they're online watching, checking out this church you're going to, this new church and doctrine, hey, parents, listen, I'm looking at you on the camera. <laughs> I've missed so much stuff, too. We're in this boat together. Parents cannot parent apart from the Holy Spirit. I've probably done more wrong than right. So then why are you going to talk about parenting, Chris? Because I keep learning. And I'm growing. And I'm, I'm focused on the cross and redemption. And so some of you singles, at the end of the service, when we call for prayer, you're going to need to forgive your parents. Because they did not do what I'm saying. Some of you parents are going to need to have to forgive yourself. And say, wait, man. Now listen, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Don't beat yourself up. Listen, it's time to wake up and it's time to get moving. Kingdom culture, kingdom culture, kingdom culture over. Well, that's how my mama raised me. Hey, that's how my mama raised me has to go when the king comes, King Jesus, and he has his own culture and everything lines up with the word of God. My mama told me, don't ever let anybody lay hands on you. Listen, Jesus said, turn the other cheek. Which one's it going to be? You're going to follow your mom or you're going to follow Jesus? And so a lot of stuff we've learned has been wrong. And so again, singles, you may need to forgive your parents afterwards. Parents, I shouldn't lose you because this is Captain Obvious. In preparing this lesson, I'm like, oh, man, I got to re-add this. I got to reapply this. Just like your car should go to the mechanic every 3,000 miles, unless you have synthetic oil, then 5,000, right, Angel? <laughs> oil change. When's the last time you did a parent checkup? Where you looked under the hood and said, okay, how are we doing here? How are we doing here? What, 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 are, what are we doing right? What are we doing wrong, right? Go get a babysitter. Go away. Hey, get a, away on a, on a retreat. Or, anyway, parents, please. And then grandparents. Some of you grandparents, you shot your shot, and it was a miss. And that's okay. You're really the experts in the room. Why? Because you should... Because of the Holy Spirit, here's what I've done wrong. And you should be able to share that with the next generation coming up so they don't repeat the, next, the mistakes that you have made. What I'm going to share to you today, listen, I've made some mistakes as, uh, with, with my children. Everybody's going to do it. I've never met anybody who walks in the Spirit all the time. We all get into our flesh. I've been too hard on my kids. And sometimes I've been way too soft with a false grace. And so this is important for us. It's a culture. It's a culture. It's a, why is culture important? We'll go ahead and, and, and throw up the, the leading cause of injury in old men is them thinking that they're still young men. Listen, I'm hitting 50 this next year. If you need help moving, don't call me. I've, I've put couches up three stories. I did my time for the kingdom of God. I moved so many people. And you, you know who you are, but it ain't happening no more. 
Again, call DJ. I was moving paint into my car a while ago. Five-gallon buckets from Regal Paint. If you ever need paint, go to Regal Paint, okay? Um, and, and when I put it in my car, the next day I woke up and my neck was like this. I'm like, what the heck? What did I do? I don't remember doing anything. I don't remember. God, what did I? And it was just moving five gallons of paint. Oh, my God. So I'm done moving. Culture. In our church, culture, don't ask somebody over 50 to help you move. Okay? Singles, we're going to call you. Welcome to Bow Down. You're on the moving team. <laughs> potluck. We have potlucks and, and meals in our house churches. Listen, the older folks need to go first. Do you know why? Leviticus. It says this. Stand up in the presence of elderly, show respect for the age, fear God, I am the Lord. So when an elderly person comes in, and that'd be whatever you think that might be, um, (laughs) you need to get up and you need to let them go first. Kingdom culture, kingdom culture. We see kids going first. No, 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 no. They need to learn patience and delayed gratification. I don't have a lot of old people today. That would, have, that would have been, hallelujah! <laughs> Establishing culture as well is important in here because of, well, if you have the zombie clip. These are basically teenagers and sometimes college students and sometimes parents. Right? We can look and say, oh, wow, I, I didn't realize on my phone seven hours yesterday. And we're becoming zombies. So how's that affecting our community? How's that affecting our kids? I I was so proud of uh, Bill uh, Rodriguez and Sarah. Sarah leads worship, and I'm glad you're back, Sarah. But I, 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 I... (laughs) Basically, Bill said, hey... I only give kids game time, uh, game time on their phone on the weekends. Brilliant. Brilliant. Are you trying to raise a gamer? Are you trying to raise... And so, man, when do you give a kid a cell phone? I remember talking to a pastor friend of mine and just asking him counsel on this. And he's like, it's funny you ask because last week my daughter, who's in 11th grade, she just sent a a picture of herself uh, uh, without a top to a boy. And she got caught. 11th grade. Talked to another friend of mine who told me, don't, don't give my kid a phone till he's 16 years old. I said, why, man? He's like, because I gave a, a phone to my daughter uh, when she was 12, and she became addicted to pornography, and she led a promiscuous life, and it has ruined her life because, so listen, covenant eyes on the phone. If you don't have covenant eyes on the phone, you need to get it. Parents, if you don't have covenant eyes on your kid's phone, you are failing them. And I don't apologize with that language. And listen, girls, if you're dating a guy, you should have free transparency with their phone, with their emails and everything. Like what Jackie was saying, listen, my wife has all my stuff. I don't even know my, my passcode. She does, though. <laughs> Completely transparent. Because this is a major, major issue in the body of Christ. And so as a culture, as a church culture, what are we saying? What are we doing? I was so happy when 516 was on their end of the year retreat, and I took my kids on that trip, and, and my son had been like, Dad, I'm 13. All my friends got Snapchat, Dad. All my friends got Snapchat. And I said, hey, guys, what do you guys think? Should he get Snapchat? And I had, see, it's not pre-516, post-516, so there was kingdom culture that was there that said no way on the Snapchat. And they shut my homeboy down. (laughs) Is he angry? Is he resentful? Maybe. But that's his problem. (laughs) I'm not trying to please him. I'm trying to please God. And my job is to protect. Anyway, here's the deal. I don't have time to get into this, but I'm going to send you an email. So hopefully everybody signed up for our connection cards. I'm going to send you a few things. 
parents, right? Because this are, these are things we need to revisit and keep in front of us. Number one, I'm going to send you data on what's happening with cell phones. As we have data now that kids have had cell phones for a numbers of years, what's happening to them? We have that real data. Suicide's gone up. Depression's gone up. All kinds of problems. Addictions have gone up. And we're going to get that to you. We're also going to give you the ICE plan. We're also going to give you the, 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 the plan of the four C's with the seasons so you have that. Okay? So you're going to get that via email this week. All right? So we have to be a church where we build a culture by talking around the word of God. Why do we think this? Why do we do that? Why do we do things like that? Rather than allowing the culture and maybe even the culture that we were raised in to form our mindset about why we do what we do. I want you to turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 7, please. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, and I want you just to look at, at, at verse 7, because I see this happen, and, and by the way, parents, I'm not trying to hate on you, and I'm not thinking about anybody right now, so don't get offended, but I'm going to say some things, and, and look, if the shoe fits, it fits. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 7, it says this, a bribe, what does it do? It corrupts the heart. That's what it does. And so when I say, Johnny, if you're good, I'm going to give you this. Johnny can be good in order to get this, but what you've done is you've corrupted his little heart because he's being good, not because he wants to be good, because he wants to honor God, but he's being good to get that candy, and you've corrupted his little heart. Bribes corrupt the heart. And a lot of parents have corrupted their child's heart because they're not reading the Bible. Jesus rewards us, but do you know when that reward's coming? Mm -mm. I felt like I got rewarded the other day, like a year late, but God, I'm not questioning your time. Thank you for the reward. (laughs) When a child's obedient, I reward them afterwards, not before, because I don't want to corrupt their heart. I want to reward them. Hey, you are doing such a good job. Here you go. Because obedience equals blessing in the Bible. When there's a skill, there's a difference between something character building and a hard attitude where they should obey and a skill. So, for example, swimming. Johnny doesn't want to learn how to swim. You keep telling him. Here's what you can do when it's a skill. You can bribe. Hey, Johnny, listen. If you learn how to swim and you go to the store, you buy the biggest super soaker you can buy. You put it out on the shelf and you say, hey, once you swim, you can have that. It's okay to bribe them on things that are skill and different things like that. Reward them for that. But issues of the heart, don't bribe them. You're going to corrupt their little hearts. And it's so important that we talk about this stuff. Proverbs 29, 17, please. Proverbs 29, 17. Twenty nine seventeen, it says, "Discipline your son." And, and and if you're taking note, discipline means to train in holiness or train in righteousness. God has a standard set in His Word, and we're training him and and her to that standard as parents. He will give you rest. He will give delight to your heart. I've seen kids that are not disciplined, and they don't give you rest, and they actually do the opposite. Verse 18, where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint. Uh, Proverbs 29, 17, or excuse me, 18. Another word there could be perish. Without vision, people perish. Without vision, people perish. Without vision, people perish. Parents, if you do not have a vision for your child... They're going to perish. 
Now, I trust in God's grace, but we have a responsibility before God. We are to, verse 17, discipline our children. It is our responsibility as parents. Verse 19. But mere words, a servant is not disciplined. That's you just talking. You're just repeating yourself. Parents, don't repeat yourself. Please don't do that. Please don't do that. Please don't do that. You're building a disrespect for your word. They know you don't mean what you say. And and by the way, those of you who are mentoring, working at Urban Youth, working with kids, volunteering out and outreach, listen, this is for you too. It's for you too. Because sometimes the church has to come in a little bit. And we've got to cast vision. Because we don't want anybody to perish. It finishes out in 19, for though he understands, he will not respond. I want you to turn to Deuteronomy chapter 6, please. So we see that. Without vision, without vision, people perish. Without the prophetic word, people will cast off restraint. You, parent, are supposed to call forth the vision in their life. When John the Baptist uh, was being dedicated to the Lord, the Holy Spirit fell on his dad, and he began to prophesy, and he said, you, child, will be that one crying out in the wilderness. That's when he was a baby. And, And guess what? John the Baptist came, and what was he? He was that one crying out in the wilderness. That was Old Testament before the Holy Spirit fell. Parent, you have the Holy Spirit of God. You should be able to prophesy like that about your children and begin to call forth. And if you don't, ask the Father. Ask the Father. How, God? How? And he will give you direction to begin to speak life. This is who you are. This is what you're called to do. This is your gift. This is your calling. This is what I think. Have you ever thought about this? Deuteronomy 6, 1, it says, Now this is the commandment, the statutes and the rules that the Lord your God commanded me to teach you, that you may do them in the land to which you are going over, that you may fear the Lord your God, you and your son, and your son's son, by keeping all, you might want to highlight that, his statutes and his commandments, which I command you, all the days of your life, and that your days may be long. Hear, therefore, O Israel, and be careful. There's this carefulness in the vision. I want to be careful about the vision that I, that I said. I want to be careful. Hey, do I have a scripture for that? Be careful to do them, that it may be, go well with you, and that you may multiply greatly, as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has promised you in the land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, with all your might. Now, let me just say this right here. I'm going to get into things of obedience and calling kids to a righteous standard, and it can come across as legalistic. Understand, Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey my what? Commands. I am training my kids to love God's commands because God says this, obedience is better than what? Sacrifice. We want to raise obedient children because it's not about obeying me. I don't, I don't have control issues. You can ask anybody. Some of you laugh too loud. And I, I, I know you... It's not about me being respected. It's not about me being honored. It's not about me. Listen, no. It's about me training them to obey the Holy Spirit, even when they don't want to. And and people are like, I just want God. I want you to baptize me in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Do you know what happened? The first person that was baptized in the Holy Spirit was Jesus. And the Holy Spirit led him where? Wilderness, fast for 40 days. Now, not the first person, but anyway, there was other people baptized, so forgive me, that's bad doctrine. What I'm saying is that Jesus was baptized in the Holy Spirit. The Spirit led him out into the wilderness. Look, who wants to do that? Who wants to go without food? Who wants to go in the wilderness? No, I want to go to the city, bro. 
Like, I'm the king, dad. I, I deserve to be worshipped. And so I want to raise my kids that this ain't about you being happy. It's about you being holy so that when the Holy Spirit leads, you go. Understand the motive is love and worship. I want them to worship God. I want them to love God. And we prove our love for God. He sees our love when we obey his commands. That's what Jesus said. So it's not me being legalistic. He said, if you love me, you'll obey my commands. So that's why I'm training my kids like that. That's why I'm so serious about this. Verse 6. And these words that I command you today shall be in your heart, and you shall teach them diligently. Highlight that to your children, and you shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. That's all the time. That's constant. That's having conversations that are bringing them back to the word of God when issues in life comes up. It's funny because the other day, I said something that was a little bit off, and my daughter on the couch sitting next to me was like, Dad, you're wrong. Don't be conformed to this world. Be transformed. I was like, look at you. That's what I'm talking. Anyway, this is how it should flow. It's how it should work. That's all the time. Verse 8, bind them, on your son, on, uh, bind them as a sign on your hand. They should be a frontlets between your eyes. And you should write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. So the word of, word of God everywhere. Hobby Lobby. They don't support me, by the way. Someday they will. They're supposed to be Christians. Contact them, please. Anybody listen? Urban Youth Impact. Mr. Green. Send that green. Go to Hobby Lobby and grab some scriptures and put them all over your house. I put scriptures on my kids' mirrors when they were little, brushing teeth, just reminding them of, of the word of God and what they were dealing with, right? My, my wife was going through a season of stuff, and I had scriptures that were on the back of our cabinets. When she opened it up, boom, there's the word of God dealing with that issue. We have scriptures, right, all over our house in different areas. Why? We've got to keep the word of God in front of us. We've got to take the word serious. We've got to be careful, and we keep it in front of our kids. Now, listen understand it says parents you do this the church is not supposed to disciple your children parents but here's where we are in our society hey youth pastor hey children's church oh you got my kids no they don't have your kids we got great youth pastor great show they don't have your kids that's your job you are to disciple them so you need to come up with a discipleship plan for your children. What is God saying? What is God saying to the both of you? In children's church, they're going through a curriculum. It's called Answers in Genesis. And so every four years, they go through the entire Bible in children's church. By the time they're seventh grade, twice through the entire Bible. And it's all age appropriate. So they're getting what's on their level. Understand, Answers in Genesis also has an addition online, parents, where you can follow along, but it's way deeper. And you can do that five days a week because, listen, we're not the ones discipling you are. God's going to hold you account accountable to discipling your kids, which is why next week we're spending two weeks on discipleship. I also want to encourage you parents to look up a website called Seed Seeds Worship. When my wife and I were raising our kids, uh, we did not, when we were driving around, listen to music that would make them want to twerk, that would fill their minds with gutter and pollution, but we played Seeds Worship, so by the time they were four years old, they'd memorized over 100 verses from God's Word. And so they memorized different songs. I sang it for the 8.30 service. I don't sing in the recorded service, so you'll have to come at 8.30 if you want me to sing for you. Seeds, phenomenal. 
Why? Because so a man thinketh, so is he. If you hang out with an angry man, you will become like him. That's what it says in Proverbs. And so, listen, all this, all this hip-hop that's talking about killing and guns and this, you let that child listen to that kind of stuff all the time, and he goes up and he starts doing what he's hearing because that's how he thinks, that's how he responds. And this is where it gets serious. Jesus said, warned. He warned, woe to you if you cause one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble. It would be better if you took a millstone, tied it around your neck, and drowned yourself into the sea. Now, what does millstone mean in the Greek? There was a hand millstone, and then there was another millstone. That was the millstone of donkey. You know what's used there in Jesus's? This is Jesus now. The donkey millstone, which pictures a violent neck-breaking death of you going all the way down to the bottom. This is serious. Are you allowing pollution to come into your home, parents? Let me help you with your vision. I'd like you to put up the four C's, please. I'm just going to go real quick through this. Vision. Vision. If you have a vision to go on a mission trip with your kids, probably not two years old, okay? That might be a little waste. So vision, thinking through, okay, what do they need at what age? And so you see a caretaker, provide, protect, nurture, guard their hearts. There's so many things coming into their little lives where people are saying things to them. And by the way, psychologists say it's zero to six, that's when their little hearts are formed. That's when their kind of identity is formed. So we want to protect that at all costs. Proverbs 4.23 said, guard your heart above all else because it's the wellspring of life. And so we want to guard their little hearts. That's our job to guard and protect their hearts and, and make sure, hey, this stuff is coming in. What is good, what is noble, what is pure? Philippians 4.8, I'm quoting it. What is good, what is noble, what is pure, what is of good report, right? What is worthy of praise. Think on these things. And it's our job to help them think on these things. So we pray, we provide, we protect. The next one is the cop. The cop. If you're triggered by that, come get prayer afterwards. The cop, their role is to correct what's What's going on when they're 5 to 12? Because they don't know. You know, right from wrong, we're teaching them. And we'll get into more uh, consequences here in a minute, but training them, teaching them, disciplining them, praying for them, walking alongside, correcting their behavior that is an affront to God, usually. Rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. The next one is coach. This has been hard for me. Because I like being a cop, right? God killed the Pharisee in me. Uh, there was no amens. There should have been a bunch of them. Like I'm the only one. So I've had a hard time moving from cop to coach, right? Coaching, when you come alongside, hey, here's your phone. How can I coach you up on that? How can you develop best practices? Helping them think through why they're doing what they're doing. But look, in the cop years... 5 to 12, here's what scripture says. Don't argue with a fool or else you will become like them. Your kids are fools. I'm glad they're in kids' church. <laughs> they're like, man, that is so rude. No, 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 listen, it's biblical. Because the Bible says folly is bound up in the, in, the, in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction drives folly from a fool. All kids are fools. I don't care what you learned in your psychology class. Scripture says they're fools. And listen, I don't, know, I don't apologize for what Scripture says. They're fools. Now, I'm not going to tell my kid, hey, Johnny, you are just a little fool. I'm not going to tell them that. 
I'm going to tell them, hey, hey, you're fearfully and wonderfully made, created in God's image. And when you mess up, listen, there's grace for you. Jesus died for you. That's why daddy can't even obey. That's why daddy needs Jesus. And I want to pray for you because you know what? You're not called to do that. You're better than that. In fact, look at what scripture says, because this is what it says. This is who you are. You're supposed to walk in the word because Jesus was the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. And so you want to look like Jesus, but you can't. And that's why you need the cross. We have to have vision in our parenting. And by the way, when I'm going off like that, I don't talk to my, my kids like that at home. That'd be a little weird. I'm more chill, more laid back. And the last thing is consultant. What's a consultant? Hey, parents, you shot your shot. If it clanked, it is what it is. Don't be trying to rebound. God's got the rebound. God's got a Rodman on his team. He's going to get that rebound. Consultant says, hey, can I, can I talk to you about this? And if they say no, then you respect that and you pray. That's going to be really hard for me too. Please, I need help, God. So that's vision, guys, where we look at our child's life. Now, if you're here and you've done messed up, it's okay. It's why you're here. Welcome to Bow Down. I want to give some practical stuff here, and it's called iced. Now, don't put this up because I got some fresh manna. Actually, you can put ice up, yeah. I just, I just got this yesterday because usually I use ice when I dis- discipline, but the fresh manna is a D at the end. And the D represents direct them to the cross. So I'm changing my whole urban youth. Sorry, I trained you wrong. We're going to add that I get a D, but guess what? Grace, we're adding the D. Direct them to the cross. So what does this mean? Instructions. Listen, did God give the children of Israel instructions? Ten Commandments, he gave them instructions. Here's what I want you to do. Here's what I'm calling you to. Parents, be like Father God and have clear instructions for your children. If you don't give instructions, you're going to frustrate them. How frustrating would it be to play a full game basketball court when there is no rules at all? You could travel, you could double dribble, you could tackle, that would be frustrating, it might be fun, but it'd be frustrating for a kid. If there's no boundaries, if you're not clear on, hey, this is what we expect of you, you're not parenting with vision. You're a reactionary parent. You have the Holy Spirit of God, no reactionary parents. This is why you need to go get your oil changed and say, what issues are we dealing with right now? What issues are we dealing with right now? Okay, let's come up with some instructions that are attached to God's word. You want to write that down. Make sure my instructions are attached to God's word. There's a verse for that. So I'm calling you to do all things without complaining. So my child complains, and then I say, wait a minute. The instructions are do all things without complaining. So now we go to the C, and what is the C? It's the consequences. Consequences. Make sure the punishment fits the crime. Consequences are if, then. And if you don't, again, if you don't like it, Deuteronomy 28. God says, obey me, blessings. Disobey me, curses. You'll bring curses on your life. And we see the children of Israel suffer. And we say, wow, man, Chris, that's Old Testament. Okay. Galatians chapter 6, it says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A person reaps what he sows. There is a sowing and reaping principle uh, built in to to the kingdom of God. And when we disobey God and disobey his words, there are consequences. God wants to bless. That's why he gave us his word. 
When you read Joshua chapter 1, 7 and 8, it says, hey, listen, if you're careful to obey my command, not look to the left, not look to the right, that the words of my law would not, you'll meditate on them. You'll meditate. They'll not leave your mouth. You meditate on them day and night. You'll have good success. You'll be prosperous wherever you go. And you will cause this people to inherit the land. He wants to bless. God is a good God. He demonstrated that on the cross while you were still sinners. Christ, he died for us in our rebellion. So consequences. Man, write down a list that you're having, the standard and instructions you want to set. And once you have that list, come up with the consequences. Come up with the consequences. You need to keep that in front of the kids. So, again, I'm not thinking about anybody. It just is what it is. When my kids were little, and I'd be talking to somebody in church, they would come up and they would interrupt. Unacceptable. Why? Because they're not honoring the conversation. So I taught my kids, if you need to talk to dad or mom, you put your hand right on my hip. Do not ever interrupt. And when mom and dad feels your hand, I will do like this to acknowledge it. But you can stay there and you can wait because I believe in patience and delayed gratification. This is a great lesson. More than what you want, which is a lollipop that Johnny got. All right? And we train them in that. I train my children in right away obedience. Delayed obedience is disobedience. Slow obedience is no obedience. Right away, all the way with a happy heart. Why? Because that's what God wants from us. He doesn't want kids big kids growing up saying, I feel you, Holy Spirit, but I'm going to pray about it more. I see what your word says, but eh. so I'm training my kids. It's, it's, it's for them, releasing them to God, getting them ready to walk in the spirit. And so when I taught my kids right away, all the way, we made it a game in non-conflict training because when there's conflict, they're not listening. They're worried about the punishment. So a good parent, non-conflict time, will sit down and we'll talk through with the kids. Here's what the Bible says. Here's the standard. Here's the consequences. Help us make consequences. And we have that conversation. When I disobey, I get candy. No, that's not going to be the consequence. But it's funny, when I allow my kids to do consequences, when they got a little older, they were making consequences harder than what I would have come up with. So it's a good pro process. And we're communicating, we're talking, and they know beforehand, before it's done, so I'm not exasperating my child. I'm not getting upset and going off on them, because they already know. And so, consequences. When I taught them to come here, please, we required yes, sir, and no, sir. Reason why I didn't want yes, dad, mom, yes, mom, because in church, that ain't going to work. So I want something to work in the house where it does all over the world. Yes, sir, yes, ma'am. I want that respect. That old school Chick-fil-A, my pleasure stuff, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> where they shine like lights. Yes, sir. Let's honor those. Let's honor those in authority. Not yeah. When I taught them to do that, we played Simon Says. Simon Says, go get a pair of underwear and come back. <laughs> you know. Simon Says, go get a pair of underwear, clean, put it on your head, and come back. <laughs> and so they're going right away, right away, right away. They can obey. Yeah, I got you now. Now when I tell you to do something that you don't want to do, same way. That's the standard. You know your bad little behind can obey. That's the standard we call them to because they've already proven they could do it when they're happy about it, when it's a good reward, but when something they don't want to do, oh, slow obedience, no obedience. You know, in our house, hey, don't count to three. Parents, stop that. Why? You're letting those little rebels decide when they want to come. They're in control, not you. Come here. Yes, sir. Chris, it sounds like you're like a drill sergeant. No, no, I'm not. I want what's best for my kids. And so consequence, and listen, execution, last thing. If you don't execute, you don't mean what you say. When you don't execute, 
You're, you're, you're creating kids to look at God in a way where he's becoming an idol. And what do you mean by that, Chris? Here's why. If I am never executing, it's teaching my child there's no consequences for your behavior and it's no consequences for your sin. God is not like that. You will reap what you sow. And so when I call it grace, which is really a false grace, and I keep repeating myself and I never follow through with execution, I'm ruining their life because here's why. They're going to go to work. The, 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 the boss is going to tell them what to do. They're not going to say, yes, sir. They're going to get flack and they're going to get fired and they're going to be living back in your house, mom and dad, because you didn't teach them to work hard, do what you're told, have a good attitude, and go hard, and submit an honor to authority. Listen, this gets real serious. Cop pulls you over, and all of a sudden, that disrespect, that dis talk back, what'd you pull me over for? Attitude comes to a cop, what's going to happen? But imagine this. Here's what I train my kids to do. If you don't agree with what I'm telling you to do, say, yes, sir, first, and then say, excuse me, dad, may I please appeal? Think about it. If I had an employee where I told them to do something they didn't want to do, and they say, yes, sir, Um, excuse me, may I please, what if you did that to a cop when you got pulled over, when you know, really, you were speeding? What'd you pull me over for? You you saw what you were. Anyway, what if you responded by saying, yes, sir, excuse me, may I please appeal? Where are you from? I'm from the kingdom of God. Welcome. Welcome. And if you, get, if you get saved today, because I got that ticket, I'll take five tickets to get you in the kingdom of heaven because you just ran into somebody who saw in light a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. You better recognize before you realize, come on, babe. Execute. Execute. God, help me to execute. Man. Now, don't execute your kids. Execute means follow through. And then the last D, again, fresh manna, direct them to the cross. Have you iced your kids today with a D? Direct them to the cross. Listen, their little bad selves can't obey Jesus. And so, listen, as I discipline, as I give out the consequences, and as I execute, afterwards I come in and say, listen, you can't obey Jesus, can you? Neither can I. That's why I need Jesus. And let me tell you, there was a couple times I gave kind of grace on the execution because you know what grace is? Grace is not cheap. It cost Jesus his life. And so to show my son or daughter what grace, actually Riley didn't get in trouble that much, but my son, what grace is, one time I went in the room where he did something wrong and he was going to get a spanking. And I believe in spanking because I believe in the Bible. Come see me if you don't. I said, son, you know what? I want you to give me a spanking. Boy, you'd have have thought he won the lotto. (laughs) Built up aggression. But I let him spank me to teach him about grace. See, this thing isn't about having good kids that are disciplined. It's me getting them ready for God. And after you discipline, after I uh, instruct consequence execution, you direct them right to Jesus because it's why we need Jesus and we can't obey Jesus without Jesus. And you must be born again. Or you're going to continue down the path you're on. All right, worship team. I'm really trying. So again, like I said at the beginning, we'll be sending you more notes. Because parents, we we want you to become the best that you are. And we want you to raise your children to obey you. Not because of you, but because you're getting them ready to obey the Holy Spirit of God. You want them to walk in love, so you begin to love God's commandments, but you create that kingdom environment in the home, and you raise them in a a way that's going to honor God. It's going to honor his word. It's going to honor others. So as we close, listen, that D, direct them to the cross. I can't obey, obey God without the Holy Spirit. Impossible. We need Jesus. That's why he died on the cross, because Deuteronomy chapter 6, Deuteronomy 28, Deuteron- uh, uh, Exodus, uh, I think it's 20, 10 commandments, 
the children of Israel, they could never obey. That's why Jesus came, because now he gives us the power to obey via the Holy Spirit. You and I, we can't parent without the Holy Spirit. We can't obey without the Holy Spirit. So if you're here today, and if you get saved today from a parenting talk, that's the Holy Spirit. But God is here if you need Jesus. He can help you out and fix you wherever you are. Again, prayer partners, come on up. Listen, if you've been messing up as a parent, you can pray and confess there, but you could also come forward. Some of you young people, singles, like, man, my home didn't do any of this. And there may be some anger. There may be some bitterness. There may be some judgments. Do not do that. You need to come forward and receive prayer. And whatever else God is doing, whatever else the Holy Spirit is doing, uh, we're here for you. We love you. And so, Father, I pray that you would just pour out your spirit in this place as we set our affection on you, Jesus. Help us to worship you, God, with our whole heart, our, all of our, our mind and all of our strength, God. We want to love you, Jesus. Help us to come under your discipline because you said if, we don't, if you don't discipline us, then we're illegitimate children. And so, God, we just ask for your discipline in our lives. We need you, Jesus. Direct us to the cross, the glory of the cross. We love you, Father, because your son bled and died on that cross for our sin, for our shame, for our rebellion, for our mistakes, for my bad parenting. And I just glory in your cross, Jesus. Be exalted as we worship you now. In Christ's name.